Welcome to this fourth video in the Flight Simulator First Officer series. Uh, for those of you unfamiliar with FSFO, it's a virtual co-pilot that can be used with FS9, FSX, P3D, and Microsoft Flight Simulator. Today we're looking at the, the newest uh, incarnation, FSFO Professional Version 2, which is designed to work specifically with the PMDG 737NGX, 737NGXU, 747, the Quality Wing 757 and 787, the Captain Sin 757 and 767 uh, version 3, and the Aerosoft CRJ Pro. FSFO is uh, different from uh, the other virtual co-pilots that you may be familiar with in that it's highly flexible, very simple, but yet still very realistic. Uh, FSFO allows novice uh, uh, users uh, to fly very complicated aircraft with very little knowledge. In fact, all you need to do is uh, is be able to program the FMS, and you can pro and you can fly these uh, these sophisticated uh, machines too. It's also built and designed for the uh, for the virtual flyer who values realism, but simply doesn't have the time in their life, uh, rather through work or, or life, to perform an hour plus uh, uh, pre-flight flows, um, or to go through manuals to fall specific scripts. So FSFO covers both those genres. It covers the, both the, air, the novice and the, uh, and the uh, complicated user. And I hope you get a sense of that uh, today. Uh, with that in mind, let's go ahead and uh, let's enter the, the co-pilot here, or excuse me, enter the cockpit, uh, this PMTG uh, 747 cargo variant, Atlas Air. And the first thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to configure uh, FSFO to, uh, to, uh, to work uh, here with this aircraft and go through the, uh, the, the available configurations. Um, we're not going to go through them all. We covered uh, these uh, at great length in earlier uh, videos. So what I'm going to do is just highlight the differences between uh, the, the, the configuration options from uh, uh, FSFO Pro version 1 and FSFO uh, uh, Pro uh, version 2. Uh, most uh, noticeable is the, uh, the sound configuration. Uh, it has a completely new uh, sound wrapper. Uh, FSFO uh, prior incarnations uh, required you to output your sound through whatever default Microsoft setting you had. Uh, this new version allows you to select which device uh, you want to hear uh, the sounds from. Typically, I have the uh, co-pilot uh, coming through my USB headset, and then I have the flight attendant announcements coming through my speaker. Uh, ga that gives the illusion that the, uh, that, the, that the flight attendants are behind me, much like they would be in the real aircraft. It helps with the realism. However, today, I'm actually going to set this to make sure that they're both going through uh, my speakers. I have actually recorded this already. Uh, didn't realize that I, I had the, uh, the co-pilot's output coming through my USB headset and then the, this, the, the uh, recorder was uh, capturing the, uh, what was coming through the speaker so you couldn't hear the co-pilot. So I just uh, made that correction now uh, and then um, hopefully it will come out in this video. So uh, if you're coming over from version 1, please make sure you configure your, your sound output. In fact, uh, you should delete your entire uh, user configuration and, and start anew because there are some other uh, configuration options. Okay. With that done, uh, let's go ahead and close that. We have the uh, the settings um, saved for our, our sound configuration. The next available option that differs from version one is the checklist response uh, delays. What this does is it, it provides a, a time lapse between uh, when the co-pilot calls a checklist item and the captain responds to it. Uh, it provides the time lapse in 0.5 increment or point, uh, uh, half second increments up to 10 seconds. Uh, so for example, uh, the co-pilot will call uh, parking brake. And depending on this value right here, the captain would reply set. If it was set to one, he would wait one second uh, before replying. That gives you the ability for those of you who, who prefer to use the button option, vice the, uh, the, the voice option to check the system before the, uh, before the, the captain responds to the, the call. Uh, another option here is the smoking uh, mic uh, mute, which I realize now is just a terrible name for an option. And I'll probably try to look for something that's more descriptive. So what this does, it allows you to configure the internal uh, no smoking uh, option within uh, Flight Simulator to provide a soft mute uh, for the speech recognition engine. This is useful for individuals who fly online or for those individuals who may have their cockpits in uh, areas um, in their house where it's not amenable to, uh, to, to solidarity, if you will, so kids in the background or, or spouses or what have you. You don't want a, a, a something yelled to be misinterpreted as a command and lower the landing gear at the wrong time. Uh, so that gives you that option. All you have to do is go in within your, uh, 
your simulator of choice. Go up to search, type alert, and uh, and configure your no smoking option. I have it set to V uh, for voice. So uh, when you toggle that on and off, uh, it will it will put a soft mute on the uh, speech recognition. I'll show you that too as we get into the game, so you can uh, get a better idea uh, of what that is. Um, another option uh, that's different uh, from version one is it now provides the uh, option to check for uh, updates. You can check and download and apply updates via having to go to Sim Market and download them. Uh, so it's kind of automated here. You can also check for messages. Uh, this is where I'll, I'll pipe the what's being worked on and what you should be looking out for as far as uh, FSFO is concerned. Right now we're adding the uh, Aerobus uh, uh, lineup into the Pro version 2. Uh, that will be a, a free update uh, later on. Um, and then after that we'll add the Majestic Dash 8. I'm trying to focus on aircraft I think that are going to be converted over to, to Microsoft Flight Simulator. So it would be less work uh, into the future uh, when we uh, make FSFO available for that uh, simulator. Um, Okay, and that's uh, that's kind of it for the uh, for the updates. Uh, I have updated the um, the the nav option too. Uh, there were some problems before, so if you're coming over from version one, you should update your nav data uh, again. All you have to do is uh, go ahead and click that button, then click browse, uh, then navigate to whatever executable uh, uh, you have. So whatever simulator executable you have, uh, just go ahead and, and navigate to that. Uh, click open and then it will locate it. That way it knows which make runway directory it's used. And then when you're ready, just hit update nav uh, database. Uh, you should do that if this is the first time you're using this. This will uh, populate the, the right uh, ILS, the right courses, the right runway settings that FSFO uses. I've already done that. That does take up to 10 minutes to do. Uh, so even if you're coming over from version one, you should re-update your nav database. Okay, that's all for configurations. Again, we'll discuss a few more of these as we uh, as we get into the the flows and the checklist. But I encourage you to um, to watch earlier videos or to open the manual, uh, and then you can read uh, which each one of those options uh, does and uh, what's beneficial, what you want to use and what you don't want to use. Okay, with that said, let's go ahead and, and get out of this now, and let's. Uh, Let's connect the uh, uh, FSFO to the simulator. Uh, by design, FSFO is an external uh, application that uses FSUIPC to read the values. Uh, I want to keep it external. I don't want FSFO to ever mess with your uh, with your configuration or with your, your aircraft configuration file. I want to keep it separate uh, just because it's easier to do and I think it's better for the user. I don't want anything messing with my configuration files and I don't think you do either. All right, so with that said, we're going to go ahead and hit connect. If the connection is successful, this will turn to connected and it will turn green, uh, which it does. And then it will return the aircraft weights and the uh, fuels values in the message box here. OK, so one configuration option we are going to discuss is the auto option. Uh, what this does is it initiates the auto flows when certain parameters are met. Uh, the difference between a flow and a checklist is a flow is something that the co-pilot and pilot perform uh, without any communication with each other. They know they have certain tasks to do based on the standard operating procedures of their airlines. And if you were to be realistic, you wouldn't uh, you wouldn't tell the co-pilot to, 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 to pre-flight flow. Uh, these are professional pilots. They know when they have to do certain acts. So uh, with that said, the pre-flight flow is initiated when uh, when we open the main door. That kind of uh, simulates the, the co-pilot entering the cockpit. Uh, the before start flow is initiated uh, when you close the main door, again, by hitting Shift E. The after start flow is initiated when all engines are started and, uh, and stable. Uh, the uh, after landing flow is initiated when you reach your destination airport and you vacate the runway and the aircraft falls below 14 uh, uh, miles per hour. And then finally, the shutdown flow will be initiated at the, uh, at once you reach the gate at the destination airport and set the parking brakes. Uh, if you don't want to have automated flows, you want total control over that, you can simply uh, deselect this option right here, and then you can either click the button. If you use voice command, you can say pre-flight uh, pre flow, or if you have the uh, add to uh, FS menu enabled right here, uh, you can also access it from inside the simulator, go uh, FSFO, and then whatever you, you so uh, choose to desire. Again, it's an external application, but you really never have to interact with it. Uh, you can keep it on a separate screen. Um, everything you need is right inside inside the cockpit. Okay, so with that in mind, let's go ahead and open the main door, Shift E. 
And uh, what that will do is the co-pilot will now enter the cockpit. Good afternoon, Captain. Look around, and he will notice that the aircraft needs to be powered up, so he'll turn on the uh, the main power, standby power goes to auto, and then immediately perform the uh, the, the safety checks, which is checking to make sure the throttle is closed. He's going to check to make sure uh, that the landing gear is levers down, the flaps agree with the flaps indicator, the landing, uh, excuse me, the windshield wipers are off, and the hydraulics are off. So just all those things that could present a problem to the ground crew or the passenger, he's, he goes ahead and checks before powering up the aircraft. Uh, you just saw he turned the APU to the start position. Uh, the reason why he's using the APU and not the GPU is because that's what we identified by our configuration menu. If you wanted uh, him to use the GPU versus the APU during the pre-flight flow, you could select so here. Uh, the GPU is uh, the ground power unit. Uh, if you were to follow real uh, operations, that's what you'd want to use the GPU. Um, so you, do, you can save on gas. And then the European theater, of course, there's some sound noise abatement requirements for using GPU vice an APU. An APU is nothing more than a small aircraft engine, so it makes a lot of noise. However, again, the, the point behind FSFO Pro is to, uh, to get you off the ground uh, quickly. So uh, uh, we're going to use the APU because it's just not going to be running long. Okay, so now the aircraft is, uh, is uh, powered up. You saw the co-pilot there wait uh, for the uh, APU to spool, uh, which he did. And then he went ahead and put the, uh, the, the, the st initiated his checks. You can see right now he's performing some system tests. Um, he just did the, uh, the, the CVR test. Um, you can see the CVR test right there uh, just completed. Then he's going to do the squibs one and two test. Uh, the reason why he's doing that is another configurable option, uh, perform tests when aircraft not powered. Yes, uh, when he entered the cockpit, it was in a cold and dark state. So he assumed this would be the first flight of the day and now he's performing uh, those system tests. Uh, if, again, um, in real life operations, those are typically performed by the engineers. The pilots uh, typically don't do those, but however, uh, I went ahead and put it into uh, FSFO uh, for those individuals who, who like to have those procedures. If you don't want them to perform the, the test, you can simply go to no on the uh, aforementioned configuration option. Uh, you see now the co-pilot is waiting uh, 35 seconds to um, enter the FS, uh, excuse me, enter the, uh, the position within the FMC to align the IRSs. He's waiting 35 seconds because PMDG has three options to al uh, align the IRS. It's instant, 30 seconds, and then um, realistic, which is seven to 10 minutes. Uh, so the 30 seconds there is, the, is for those individuals who have the 30 second option set. You can program the CDU now. Okay, so again, he aligned the IRS. It literally does uh, everything for us except for program the FMC, which we're gonna do here in a little bit. Heading out for the walk around. Uh, he aligned the IRS, set the IRS position, and now he's heading he's heading out for his uh, checks. Basically, he's going to go outside, make sure the lights are good. He's going to check to make sure the pedo uh, tubes aren't covered, uh, make sure nothing else is covered, uh, and the aircraft is in uh, good condition. While he's performing the walk around, that's uh, the pilot's chance to uh, to go ahead and um, program the, uh, the FMC. One thing I do want to show you, you saw the pilot uh, enter the IRS position. Again, that's a configurable option. Uh, it's right here, co-pilot set FMC position. If you don't want the uh, co-pilot to set the, you just, uh, the FMC, but you can deselect that. Uh, you should keep in mind on some aircraft, that's not an option to do PMDG aircraft, though it is. So uh, there it is. So now while the co-pilot is, uh, is performing his walk around, let's, let's get the program in the uh, FMC. Uh, we're going to go ahead and set some fictional uh, data, too, like the fuel. Uh, we'll just use a random 100,000 pounds. Um, I, I didn't prepare a flight plan today, uh, but, so, but it's uh, no big deal. We can, uh, we can go ahead and just enter some, uh, some irrelevant data. Uh, so again, the position's already set. The co-pilot did that for us. Let's go to the route page. Uh, again, we're Bangor International Airport. I like to use Bangor. It has a two-mile runway. It's, uh, it's quiet. There's not a lot of traffic, so it's a good place to, to perform some test flight. And uh, we'll head down to Logan, uh, Boston, not very far away, about 174 miles, FSFO 101, we'll call this flight number. Okay, let's activate that. Uh, then let's go ahead and enter our uh, departure, our SID and our STAR. Uh, we'll use, uh, I think it's Bangor 3 now, my nav database is, needs to be updated. Uh, so runway 33, Bangor 2, that works. 
and approach into Boston. We'll use uh, Isle Atlas. Let's use ILS 33 left. And then we'll use the Ocean 4 arrival Kenny Bunk transition. And then Bend will be our uh, termination or our, ter our, excuse me, our point. Let's go ahead and activate that. Okay, that all looks good. We'll come to our knit reference page. Uh, we'll confirm our gross weight of uh, 582,000 pounds. Uh, reserves will be six. Cost index will use 35. Cost index varies uh, among carriers. It's a basically a, a, a computation or a part of the calculus to determine how fast the, 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 the aircraft should go in an effort to conserve fuel. So it's a, it's a unique calculation that's unique uh, across every airline. Uh, we're going to use flight level 240 because I think one of the, the points requires a minimum of that altitude. Uh, so that all looks good. Uh, we'll come here to thrust. Uh, we use the D-rated thrust of, uh, of uh, takeoff 1 or 5%. And then let's use 49 as our, as our temp. That should all work. Again, two-mile runway. Um, and we're not particularly heavy today, so that should work. We'll go flaps 10. That all looks right. Center of gravity, 23%. So if you did everything right, uh, you should be presented with some V-speeds, uh, which we are. So we know now that, uh, that, that that's it. That's, so if you're a pilot or, and you use FSFO, that's all you need to know how to do to get from point A to point B. Uh, and there's plenty of videos out there that show uh, how to program the FMS. And for Boeing aircraft, uh, once, you, once you learn how to program one, they're all fairly similar. I mean, you're, you'll be good to go. Okay, so with that in mind, um, that's a good time to, to go ahead and, and import our flight plan. Uh, for PMDG aircraft, importing a flight plan is not necessary. Uh, the people over there at uh, PMDG Expose have a tremendous, powerful SDK. Pretty much all the data within the FMS is exposed, so I can get things like the, uh, the top of descent and, and the distance and VREF speeds and all that. Um, however, for, let's put, say, for example, the uh, um, if you're using the uh, 737, the PMDG 737, and you want the uh, the co-pilot to um, set your ILS and courses for you, um, then you would want to uh, go ahead and import a flight plan here uh, because uh, oh, i got to find my flight plan. Here we go. We'll use this one. So any uh, FSX, P3D flight plan, generic flight plan will work. So... So now we're all imported. You can see the distance is 174 nautical miles. We're good to go. Uh, I'm going to set runway 33. Actually, let's let's re-import that. And we'll download some weather this time, just to make sure we have the right one runways. Yep. So there's our weather 300. So runway 33 works. Uh, I think we said 33 left, which is perfect on a wind of 280. That also works. I hear you're presented with some runway information. Um, um, all the relevant uh, ILS and the length and the and the, the heading and, and things of that nature. Again, for PMDG aircraft, you don't need this. Uh, the only time you would want to use it if you for if you have certain configuration options set. For example, we have managed the MCP. So when the co-pilot returns from his walk around and he continues his flow, uh, you're going to see him set the MCP. So he's going to set our speed for us. He's going to set our heading for us. He's going to set our uh, our altitude for us flight directors and the auto throttle and that's because we have this setting here however he can't set the heading if he doesn't know which runway we're taking so uh, importing a flight plan and sending this to th uh, 33 lets him know hey I need to set that heading to a uh, 333 uh, another useful option is if you want to have the and and eyes on uh, for takeoff and you select this option right here to on the co-pilot will uh, will uh, set the anti eyes to on on the uh, before takeoff checklist uh, here actually is the SID this is useful uh, we're going to inform the co-pilot we're taking a vectored approach. So during the after start flow, he's going to set the uh, the VNAV and the LNAV uh, to on. However, because we have this vectored, he will not set the LNAV. It's going to be because it's a, it's a, going to be a heading select. And then the ATC is going to vector us to our first waypoint. Uh, because remember, we said we're going to take the Bangor 2 departure, and that's a vectored departure. So that's useful here too. So the co-pilot set TOGA option. Uh, what that does is after you perform the before uh, start checklist and you center the aircraft on the runway and you increase the, the N1 past 
the co-pilot will go ahead and, and hit the uh, the toga screw for you. Uh, that way, you don't have to you know you don't have to use the mouse to, to click that thing. The co-pilot will take care of it for you. I'm going to use voice command to do that, so I'm just going to tell him take off power, and he's going to do that. But if you don't want to use voice command, uh, you have this option right here. Uh, so that's uh, that's a the in the nutshell why you would want to import a flight plan on all non-PMDG aircraft. It's critical you have to import a flight plan on every uh, flight. Uh, uh, because otherwise the uh, the copilot won't know when to do certain actions, um, won't know when to, um, uh, the, for example, uh, when you reach cruise altitude, he won't give uh, the, the passengers the, the cruise altitude message um, if he doesn't know what the cruise altitude is. So make sure you import a flight plan when using anything but a PMDG uh, aircraft. Okay, so there's the flight plan all done. Uh, the walk around has 73 seconds to go, but what we're going to do, I think, is we're just going to call them back early by hitting our uh, control button. Walk around complete. There you go. Walk around complete. Weather reports look pretty good. Okay. Give us a weather report. Um, and then uh, he's going to go ahead and, and continue his flow going down the panel, down the panel, uh, down the panel. You notice we only have one APU generator on. That is not a, a bug. Uh, it's a cargo variant, so there is no need to keep the, the second uh, APU generator on. We're not the galley power. We don't need galley power, or there's not a big power demand in the rear of the, view, uh, the aircraft at this time. Uh, so, so we don't need that second uh, APU uh, running. Uh, similarly, the packs, he should only set two packs. Uh, again, you don't need to, to, to cool the back of the aircraft or heat the back of the aircraft right now uh, because there's nobody in it. There's no packs. This is a cargo variant. So here we go. He's going to work down. Yep, there we go, set the, the both packs. Um, now he's down to the MCP, so you see he worked down the panels, and now he's going to work across, so he's going to set the MCP, set the speed, set the heading, set our altitude, and now he's uh, setting his EFIS, uh, which again is another configurable option. If you don't want him to touch that, you can simply tell him uh, to not do so by unchecking this right here. Okay, so the EFIS is done. Now he's going to work his way down to the, to the CDU. Uh, he's going to make sure his CDU page matches what's on the uh, the captain's CDU page. Um, this is all standard Boeing uh, uh, procedures. We're following the flows as recommended. Uh, again, for the MCP, if you wanted to follow actual uh, procedures, you would leave that unselect. Uh, the pilot, uh, the pilot in command, is the one who typically uh, does the uh, the MCP along with the radios and sets the altimeters. And then the co-pilot will take care of everything else. You just saw uh, the co-pilot just did a TCAS test again. That's because it's the assumption that this is the first flight of the day, so he's doing all those tests. Uh, now he's working his way down. He should be down on the lower pedestal. Uh, again, setting the auto brakes to RTO, and then uh, the passenger signs going to on. Uh, oxygen tests, and then after this, we should be checking the, uh, the ICAS. We'll check the doors page, the oxygen, to make sure everything is good. we're all set now he's going to cancel those messages and that's it so the uh, the pre-flight flow is completed the aircraft is energized and all the systems are set the uh, uh, the um, uh, aircraft is ready to go so for the first pre-flight checklist let's do this one via the the, the button option um, we won't use voice we'll use the voice on the uh, before start checklist so let's go ahead and and click on the pre-flight checklist pre-flight checklist oxygen Tested flight instruments. Heading set, altitude set, parking brake. Set fuel control switches. Cut off. Checklist complete. Okay, so there it is. Uh, let's go ahead and do that again, except for the, the co, the co pilot's a little loud, so let's turn that down just a little bit. And let's go ahead and increase the checklist response time to two seconds so you can get an idea uh, of what this setting is. Um, and then let's... Uh, Let's go ahead and set something in the wrong configuration. Parking brake off. So you can see that as well. Okay, so here we go. Let's redo the pre-flight check, uh, pre checklist. Pre-flight checklist. Oxygen. Tested flight instruments. Heading set, altitude set, parking brake. Again, so he called the, the parking brake. Um, uh, again, it's not set correctly, so if you ever uh, stuck on a checklist item and you want to know what's going on, uh, you can simply uh, look down here. You see the parking brake is supposed to be set, so let's go ahead and set it. Set fuel control switches. 
cut off. Checklist complete. Okay, so there we go. There's the pre-flight checklist all completed uh, using the button option. Uh, for the before start checklist, we'll use the voice option so you can get an idea of the difference. So once again, we're using the, uh, the, the auto. So uh, in order to initiate the before start flow, again, all we have to do is close the main door. Well, there we go. So once the door is closed, the co-pilot will then again uh, start initiating his, uh, his uh, before start flow. Disconnecting the ground power. Again, if he detects ground power is available, uh, he'll disconnect it through the, uh, through the FMC. Again, he's going to go ahead and remove the wheel chocks for you as well. Uh, these, again, are configurable options. Uh, if you don't want the co-pilot to, uh, to remove the wheel chocks, uh, you could just set it up here uh, for him to, uh, to, to not do so, and then he will uh, leave that alone. Also, you saw the co-pilot went on a walk around. Uh, that's also another another option. If you don't want the co-pilot to go on a walk around, you can just uh, remove that option here as well. There's the co-pilot set chalk. So. Okay, so now he's setting the external light. The beacon light just went to on. Uh, as you can see, the beacon light is now in the uh, 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 lower position, which is the correct position. He's going to check the doors to make sure they're all closed, uh, which they are. Uh, so we are good to go. Going to set the uh, the DSP to the stat page and then uh, checking the passenger signs one more time. So let's go ahead and uh, initiate the before start checklist, but this time we're going to use the voice. So let's go ahead and initiate the voice recognition engine, uh, which can be uh, initiated by clicking the voice button. Before start checklist. Before start checklist. Plate deck door. Closed. MCP V2153 heading 333 three, three. altitude 2400 zero, zero, zero. check takeoff speeds V1130 VR140 V2153 check CDU preflight completed completed trim we did not look at that so I'm going to go ahead and soft mute the uh, the uh, the voice so right now he's not listening check set doesn't care. I did that by simply uh, hitting V button, uh, which again toggled my, my smoking. So the trim was set to 5.5. Five. Uh, I think we're pretty close to that right now. I think a little bit down and we're good to go. Okay. So we look good. So let's go ahead and toggle this no smoking back on and bring the uh, voice back to, to life. Set. Taxi and takeoff briefing. Completed. Beacon light. On. Checklist complete. Okay. So there we go. Um... Uh, we're all set for uh, for the engine, so let's go ahead and initiate that via voice too. Oh, one thing I wanted to mention: you, you heard the uh, the co-pilot um, call out the, the speeds. Again, that's another configurable option. It's uh, it's uh, call speeds, uh, call numbers. I mean, uh, if that is uh, not checked, he would just call out set or checked if these are all set to the appropriate value. Uh, the same with the V speeds. Uh, hopefully, you'll notice that uh, that that's been improved since version one. Version one was a little robotic. Uh, this version is is less so. So um, let's go ahead and um, and uh, let's start the uh, the next phase. Start engines. Starting engine four. Okay. So uh, we did not use. Let's go ahead and toggle the voice again. We did not use uh, the auto start option, which was an option on this aircraft. Had we used the auto stop uh, auto start option. He would have started four and three simultaneously and, uh, and went ahead and uh, initiated the, the cutoff to, to the on position. Uh, and then the computer would go ahead and determine when the fuel is, uh, is uh, inputted into the system to cause the ignition. However, because we did not uh, push the auto start to the on position, he's going to do the traditional uh, wait until the aircraft um, reaches 20% and one. And then he, uh, then he initiates the uh, fuel into the system. And he'll do this uh, for engine four cutout. So there we go. Starting engine three. Okay, so now starting engine three, and we're just waiting uh, again for the uh, for the uh, N2 to rise above 20%, and when it does, he will initiate fuel into the system to cause ignition. I'm kind of showing you the non-auto start because not all the aircraft have the, uh, the auto start option.
it's a it's a customizable feature on the uh, 747. Okay, so we're just waiting for uh, for engine three now to spool, and for engine three and four to stabilize, and then we'll. Uh, engine three cut out. Here you go. Engine three is cut out. Starting engine two. So again, uh, if auto start on, it would be four and three, and then two and one, and you can you start those both simultaneously, and you let the computer figure out the uh, the the when to ignite fuel into the system. Again, uh, one thing I, I hope you're noticing is um, you do not have to, to, to read the manuals. The, the, the co-pilot's got your back. Um, program the FMS and, and you're good to go. Engine two cut out. Here we go, so engine two. Starting engine one. And then we'll start the final engine here. Sixteen percent, eighteen percent, and above twenty percent. There it goes to the fuel into the system. And now we're just waiting for all the engines to stabilize. And again, because we're using auto, uh, he's going to immediately once they are all ignition on all four engines and they're all stabilized. Uh, the copilot will start to uh, his after start flow automatically. Engine one cut out. All engines stable. There we go. So the engines have stabilized. And he's turning off the APU. Again, that's another configurable option. APU off after start. Some airliners do require the APU to remain uh, on until uh, until the after uh, after takeoff checklist. If you fly for a VA that requires that, you can simply uncheck that right there. So there you go, setting LNAV and VNAV. Again, he did not set the LNAV because when we when we did the briefing, we identified that we're uh, a vector departure, which means we'll be using the heading select function until we get uh, a departure to the uh, to our first waypoint. Uh, Copilot just went ahead and set the flaps, setting the external lights. Taxi lights just went on. If this was nighttime, he would have went ahead and set the uh, uh, the turnoff lights as well as setting. Um, your internal lights too to give you the the correct uh, lighting again the goal is to set every switch for you okay let's go ahead and do the the taxi checklist let's go ahead and unsoft the or uh, unmute the uh, mic taxi checklist taxi checklist anti-ice off recall checked auto brakes rejected takeoff flight controls Okay, so flight controls, he's looking for you to do a full left deflection. Full left. And a full right. Full right. A full up. Full back. Before I do full forward, uh, if you want to include the rudders, you can. Just simply uh, click on this option right here, and then you can include the rudders in that test. So let's go ahead and do full right deflection. Check. Ground equipment. There you go. Cleared. Checklist complete. Okay, so there you go. Uh, we're all set now. We're going to go ahead and uh, before takeoff checklist. Before takeoff checklist. Before takeoff checklist. Flaps. Set. Checklist complete. And now you should see him turning on the lights. There you go. Strobe lights and landing lights are on. Set his EFIS. He's going to go to terrain mode. And we're ready to go. Advance the, uh, well, let's take off the parking brake off. Parking brake off. Let's go ahead and uh, advance the throttles. Take off power. Thrust set. A little forward. Speed alive. Check. 80 knots. Checked. And 
with the 747. Positive right. Gear up. Landing gear up. Four hundred feet. Heading select. Here we go. And we're just climbing up to uh, acceleration height. Acceleration altitude. Right, we'll pitch down to get some speed. And start to retract our uh, flaps. Flaps five. Flaps five. Autopilot on. Autopilot on. Flaps one. Flaps one. Set heading. Two four zero. Heading two four zero. Flaps up. Flaps up. After takeoff checklist. After takeoff checklist. Landing gear. Up. Flaps. Up. Checklist complete. Okay, so there we go. He's starting his uh, his uh, flow now. It's uh, he would if it was raining, if the wipers on, he would have turned them off. Setting his EFIS now. Uh, off terrain into weather, checking the auto brake to make sure that it's in the disarm position, and then setting his uh, FMS to the progress page while yours is set to the legs page. Uh, so now what uh, what's happening is uh, we're turning on our, our course um, to intercept our uh, our first waypoint, which is Kenny Bunkport, on a course of two four zero. And once we uh, we level off here, we'll uh, we'll give uh, the uh, set L nav command again. I, I have the uh, toggled the, the smoking sign so the voice engine is is engaged but it's just it's just not listening right now so here we go let's take it off LNAV LNAV on so there we go we got LNAV now and then we're gonna go ahead and go direct to uh, to our first waypoint so there we go that's uh, that's uh, in the nutshell what we'll do is uh, you'll see once we get the to 10,000 feet, the the co-pilot will go ahead and uh, and turn off the landing lights. Uh, once we get above 18,000 feet, he will go ahead and uh, reset the altimeters to standard. Um, I'm not using uh, Active Sky right now, so the, it's standard pressure anyways. But uh, he would still uh, set those uh, those altimeters for you. Uh, the landing lights are configurable uh, when they come on and off per whatever your stop is. Traditionally, it's 10,000 feet. There are a few airlines out there that require the landing lights to be on or off at 18,000 feet. So again, uh, all configurable uh, within uh, this setting right here. Uh, one thing I want to highlight, even though I use voice to control everything, you do not have to. If you want the, uh, the co-pilot to go ahead and retract the, uh, the flaps at the, uh, at the designated uh, speeds, you can just say, uh, enable this option, manage takeoff flaps, and then he would do it automatically. Same with the landing gear. Um, you would just select this if you want him to, to lower it uh, uh, on the landing. Passing 10,000 feet. There you go. And then uh, passing 10,000 feet and the landing uh, lights just went off. So you can have the, uh, the co-pilot uh, configure all these automatically without you having to, uh, to give the command. It's, it's this option right here. Um, yeah. Okay, I, I think that uh, that highlights uh, pretty much everything I wanted to, to showcase with version two. Uh, I hope you um, uh, you know you find this beneficial and that uh, you see the uh, the value and and uh, especially if you're coming over from professional version one, uh, this one uh, it just follows the procedures much much more uh, uh, rigidly. Um, and if you're a novice user, uh, this this copilot uh, will configure the entire aircraft for you, as I hope. Uh, I was just able to showcase uh, within this video. With that said, I, I hope to uh, increase the, the development here over the next couple months. Um, um, I have to, uh, to focus a little bit on FSFO Airliner, uh, which is uh, specific to uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator, the, the uh, three airliners in that um, sim, the, uh, the A320neo, uh, the 787, and then the, uh, the 747. I want to get that up to the standard that FSFO pros up and then I'm going to switch my attention completely back on this to get the Airbus, uh, the Majestic aircraft into Pro 2. Uh, those will be uh, free up free updates. Um, uh, again, my goal is uh, to keep this about uh, $4 per aircraft. Uh, I think I'm up to nine supported aircraft now and uh, 
so about four bucks per aircraft uh, that's that's what I'm gonna try to keep it at as uh, as I move forward and uh, with that said I, I appreciate all the support um, if you have any suggestions uh, please leave them in the comments the goal is to make this to make this better uh, to make it more useful especially to, to novice uh, pilots and uh, and uh, those pilots who want realism but simply don't have their time in their lives to uh, to, to do the four to five hour flights that encompass one hour of pre-flight and then another half hour of shutdown so uh, with that said I think I'm gonna leave you here and uh, until the next video uh, I hope to see you again soon <laughs>